I'm now being joined by a professor of wildlife resources management and herpetology at the University of Uyoa Kwaibom State, Adam Enyang. He joins us from our Abuja studios. Uh, professor Enyang, thank you for your time and welcome uh, to uh, the program. Thank you very much and good evening viewers. How exactly do these diseases go from animals to humans? Well, uh, there are a lot of pathways that these diseases cross from animals to humans. You know, in Nigeria, for example, quite a number of people consume uh, wild animals as bushmeat. And then when you go around different parts of the country, you also see people who trade with live wild animals like monkeys, uh, uh, rodents. In fact, in certain parts of the country, you will see animals at the side of the street, different species, birds, uh, even reptiles like crocodiles and so on, People delight in uh, trading them as bushmeat. They also trade them as pets. Some are exported out of the country. And for this reason, they have this contact with animals. You see young children in the villages going to hunt for rodents. And as much as we know, the bats that we have, different species of birds, they have, you know, corona in their system as vectors. They carry these and they are not, you know, suffering from it. And also, you remember, you might have recalled or heard about the first corona case that came from a mammal. It came from the African civet, an animal that we find almost all over Nigeria and all over sub-Saharan Africa. That was as far back as 1984. And then this animal, people eat them. People keep them as pets. The mongooses, in some households, like in India, they keep mongooses at home. So here in Nigeria, you have, for instance, hunters who, when they kill the mother animal, they take the babies. And when they take, they keep them at home. They don't isolate them. They don't screen them. They don't know what disease that this animal is carrying. And the next thing is that something passes even in butchering. When an animal like a chimpanzee is killed, somebody stays there to butcher it. He carries it from the bush. He doesn't wear any hand gloves. And he has contact with the blood. So a lot of these diseases can easily transfer their you know, pathogens into the human being because, they, for example, the primates, the monkeys, if you look at our chimpanzee, it has almost 99% equivalent DNA with the human. And so whatever the chimpanzee is having can easily come into the man and when it comes, it becomes a suitable host. And then we At that point, uh, Prof, let me, let, let me put you on pause. We need to take a break. Prof, we need to take a break. Uh, please hold that thought. We'll take a break. When we come back, I'll allow you to conclude that thought, and then we'll move on uh, to uh, the rest uh, of the interview. Please stay on with us. Welcome back to our COVID-19 update. Before the break, we were talking to Professor Adam Enyang, and uh, he was giving us uh, several of the pathways that uh, some of the viruses, including COVID-19, uh, take from animals uh, to humans. Uh, Professor uh, Enyang, thank you for your time, and thank you uh, for staying uh, with us. Beyond how these things get transferred, I mean, from what you've said so far, some of these uh, practices are cultural across the country. People eat all kinds of exotic uh, 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 wildlife and all of that. Moving on to the issue of how this human, uh, this animal to human transmission can be broken. What can you tell us about that? Well, 
uh, the first and foremost, we must understand that animals, especially those mammalian species that are very closely related to humans, for example, the primates, those are the monkeys and the great apes like gorillas and chimpanzees. All these animals are here in Nigeria. If you go to a place uh, like uh, part of Port Harcourt, you see the people trading them on the street side. You go to Mina, you see, you go to Kaduna, and so on. Even in Guagualada, uh, here in Abuja, you see these animals on sale. Now, these are illegal activities that should be discouraged because the traders have neither the knowledge of the zoonotic you know, pathways or the potential risk of taking an animal from the wild and bringing it to uh, you know, a human environment. So, number one, environmental sanitation that we uh, do at a monthly level, we need so much sanitation in our environment, we need to discourage illegal trade in bushmeat in the marketplaces, we need to discourage people keeping exotic species at home as pets because unless these animals are free of these diseases, some, as you rightly mentioned, we have the ectoparasites, we have the endoparasites, we have as simple as flu. If I have or anybody has a flu now, and you are in contact with a chimpanzee or any monkey, you sneeze around it, it will capture it. And the same thing if the monkey should sneeze. So we, except in the zoo or in a laboratory condition, ordinary people should not keep these monkeys. But you see that in households, they keep parrots, they keep all kinds of these animals and interact with them. Their feces and their urine are sometimes leaden with microbes and other disease uh, elements. Aside from those ones that may come from uh, contact from butchering, contact from eating, I want to make it clear that there are these viruses or bacteria, some conditions that exist in the body of the animal. Even cooking it will not make the animal safe. Because there are some, you know, items like the cyst of the uh, or reproductive part of this animal that the heat of cooking will even be the means of activating it. So today we talk about climate change. The change in temperature of, of the natural environment helps to bring back to life dormant viruses and other bacteria that could have been, you know, in the soil, in the dust, take for example, if you look at tetanus, for example, it's simply found in the dung of some of our bovine species like cattle and horses and so on. And when we move these cattle across the country to all directions without control, as they keep excreting and dumping their dung everywhere, once it dries and become a particulate in air, as vehicles are moving, and spreading this thing, that's how the titanos find his way to all places that they don't used to exist before. So the diseases are there. There are even other diseases that have plagued us, like the you know, Lassa fever that we talk about, the Ebola that was here, the SARS, uh, severe acute respiratory syndrome, and all other corona. Because corona, uh, the COVID-19 is a new corona. We've had corona before COVID-19, but they were not as virulent as this. And even as I'm talking today, uh, we don't pray for it. But we should be aware that viruses mutate. And over time, the corona-19 may mutate to some other level. And this is why we must maintain not only safe distancing with fellow human beings, we must maintain safe distancing from animals, including domestic animals. So I'm, sorry, I'm, sorry to in, to I'm sorry, I'm sorry to cut in. I'm sorry to cut in at the point. I'm sorry to cut in at the point that you reached because I want to take you up on something you've just mentioned, which is that you talked about mutation. 
uh, those who have been uh, watching and listening, uh, we're already hearing that new viruses are already preparing to make themselves felt. Uh, there is a resurgence, as we are told, of something like, uh, akin to the bubonic plague happening in uh, outer T Tajikistan. In that area, there is the swine flu, the one related to pigs, that is again being refound uh, in China itself. Now, again, it does seem as if just as we are getting the handle of one, another one makes itself felt. Right. Actually, the, the time span, you know, if you take, for example, I want to bring it to the common man's level. If you look at a simple thing like a fungi, the mushroom that we eat, you can see a mushroom blossom in the morning in the forest or in a garden. And by evening time, the same mushroom shrinks. And tomorrow it is gone. You don't see it again. It doesn't mean that this mushroom and the pores that it is reproductive uh, particular is no longer there in the soil. It is still there, but in a different stage. And because of either moisture level change, temperature change, or other activities within the soil will make that same mushroom at a particular time, it comes back. The same thing happens among viruses. There are viruses that have been deposited inside the soil for a hundred years, but a simple action in the environment a natural reaction can cause it to come back to life. A place that floods get to that it wasn't there before can generate new sets of viruses. And the old virus that you had known, which scientists may have isolated in the laboratory, can mutate into something else and come even more virulent. It may cause a resistance in the system. It may cause a resistance against a vaccine that comes, and as such, we always try as much as possible, even in the laboratory, to monitor the transition from stage to stage so as to be able to produce a counter uh, product like a vaccine that can take different stages. This is what we do when you, for, a, for example, I'm in the field, I do a lot of necropsy with animals I interact with them while, while they're in the field, but we never forget to change our reagents, to change our protocol so that we don't get exposed to the dangerous viruses that are waiting there, looking for suitable environment and hosts to, you know, populate themselves. Uh, finally, I, I would want to ask you what your view, I mean, the fact that you are in the field and you understand this, uh, uh, very well. What, what has been your own view, or what's your view about how Nigeria uh, as a country has tackled the issue of COVID-19, how we have gone about it? Uh, almost more than four months in now, uh, close to five months in now, uh, our case numbers are approaching 35,000 uh, from just over 200,000 tests. People, as some of the reports on our program show, are not complying to the protocols and so on. So what do you make of it? Are, are, are we getting a hang of this? Uh, and how do you think we can go about it? Well, uh, the case of Nigeria is very pathetic as far as the attitude of the people is concerned. Nigerians have not you know, accepted the reality that the virus, COVID-19, is around us. You know, at the beginning, around April, you found people in Abuja and other city centers, they go out jogging in the morning and jogging on the street back and forth, old and young. It became possible to see people playing football on the streets and so on. These were very dangerous actions on the part of Nigerians. And so, the mere fact that the rural population of Nigerians while we were observing lockdown in Abuja and elsewhere in the city, the rural people went about their business in the farms. They say it's rich man's disease and so on. This is completely erroneous and a dangerous trend. So, so far the government has done so much. Information has been all over the place for those who care to listen. And as it were, wearing no mask, 
social distancing, washing of the hands, the use of hand sanitizer are all available to us. But I want to say, there is no single solution to the pandemic. It's a combination of things that has to be done. For example, at, at my own level, I have been able to produce the disinfection machine, which I first encountered far back 1999 when I traveled to Australia. I used a disinfection machine. This is how what I got the idea to produce a disinfection machine, which some people may argue that it doesn't work, but it works. That's why I'm safe to do. That's why for over 25 years of my life, I've been dealing with wild animals, living in the forest, trans going all over the world to do this, and I'm not sick. I'm safe from the virus. We must obey and believe as a people that to stay safe, you have to obey all the protocols. You have to change your lifestyle. Those who eat bush meat should run from it. Those who sell those animals, the government, through Nesria, can go ahead and impound these animals and send them to zoos where experts can take care of them without you know, risking the life of people. Because if it starts from a seller, it goes to the wife at home, from the wife to the child, and the cycle goes around. So government has responded well. It's left for our people. It's left for you and I to change our attitude and stay safe, play safe, and live a very safe life. Professor uh, Adam Enyang, uh, Professor of uh, Wildlife Research Management. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for your perspective this evening. Uh, thank you for your time on our COVID-19 update. <music>